Hello, it's Melinda from Alexis and Melinda's Art Space. Just thought I would play on my gel plate today and I thought I'd turn the camera on. I'm actually making some um, class examples for a gel planning class that I taught last year, just a beginner one. And I'm wanting to use up all these little tubes of paint, so I thought I'll kill two birds with one stone, I'll make some examples, turn my camera, I'll make a video, use up some paint. So the first few prints I'm just pulling is I'm making backgrounds just colourful backgrounds. I like to add two colours on. I'm working on a 12 by 12 plate but I'm actually only inking up about two thirds of it, a bit more, three quarters of it possibly because I am printing on A4 paper. So that paper there is actually off a roll. It's grease proof paper from Woolworths, their home brand stuff, their branded stuff. Um, it's a little shiny on one side and it's white on the other. It's the closest we have here in Australia to deli paper. If any Aussies are interested, I can link the product below from Woolworths, I think. I will try and do that. They've changed the packaging on me. Um, <coughs> so just wanting to make some backgrounds so I can do some sort of second printing on the top. I'm sort of still learning with my gel plate. I, I tend to get to two layers and then I put a third colour on and stuff it up. So we're only learning about one and two layer prints um, at the event I was doing. And just because that gave them the basics. Even though I'm using a large gel plate, I still like my tiny brayer. I don't know, that size brayer just fits in my hand, works well, I just like it. Um, and I do apologise for the table moving a little. Uh, I do work on a trestle table and I put this up to standing height because I ideally like to stand when I gel plate. I don't know, it's just something, um, it just feels awkward sitting down and doing it. So often I've got a table that goes from like coffee table or a trestle that goes from coffee table like normal table size to then standing height which are fantastic. So just still making some backgrounds. I like to put two to three colours in the backgrounds just to make a bit of interest than having a plain sheet of paper. So these paints I'm using, there's some Jost on your paints, there's some, oh there's a Claudia something or other really really old paint. Basically just a lot of little tubes I wanted to use up. So you can jelly print with any paint. So I went and raided my tree fern at the back because I like the look of the leaves and oh I printed with these leaves and I'm in love. I love my tree fern leaves to print with. They've got so much little texture. That one's not so nice print but I really wanted this under paint, the paint that was sitting under the leaves. So I go and put this on, on the orange background just for something different. All these prints will eventually end up in my art journal or I'll make an art journal of the prints and then work over the top of them. Most of the time I tear them up and collage and do all sorts of fun stuff in my art journal. It's just fun to make prints. Alexis and I love, Alexis is my 12 year old daughter that sometimes appears on this channel. Alexis and I love to make jelly prints and we seriously make too many that I'd ever use in a lifetime. I must get my box out and fish out some and send them out to some friends because I'll seriously never use that many. So some more little bits of foliage. These ones didn't work as well but I was sort of experimenting to see what, I'd never used actual green foliage straight from the garden on my gel plate. So I just wanted to experiment before the class. They sort of worked okay but I decided I liked the tree fern leaves better. Just because the detail we got with them, I quite like that print. That's print's quite nice. So the prints you can also, I, sometimes I tend to cut them down for a card background and then put a sentiment on top and you've done some nice quick cards which is really cool as well. So with gel planning you're wanting a really thin layer of paint, almost a translucent layer. Now I decide to play with magazines. This was a bit of a hit and miss. It worked better after my camera stopped filming. Always the way. My camera can film for about 45 minutes and then it cuts out because the memory card's full. But I was getting really good prints on the gel plate but I just couldn't lift them up. I don't know what I was doing. It was the first time I tried this as well before I taught it in a class. I'd seen loads of YouTube videos doing it both failing and succeeding and yeah I had a bit of bit of an experiment with it before but not not much. I think I'd done one to show someone um, sort of what I was talking about. So I got some interesting background prints but I didn't actually get any really clean ones until of course my camera decided to stop filming then I got some awesome ones. It's always the way. 
never works on camera maybe I should think I'm not filming and then everything might work I don't know so I'm still trying to pick up this face so basically when you press and it works better with high fashion magazines like in style bizarre um, ones like that something to do with when you press the image in some parts of the ink resist the ink on the magazine page some parts don't that's how you get the sort of the face impression or the building impression or whatever also now that with National Geographic it's the first yawn for the video and also done it with National Geographic and it works to some extent so it's very hit and miss so don't be don't start magazine um, printing and expect a perfect print every time you probably get one perfect print out of ten but hey well you've made the other nine you've had a lot of fun along the way and you've got a lot of I've got a lot of funky backgrounds with sort of the suggestion of a face as you can see there the face is still on the gel plate so basically we put the magazine picture down rub over it it leaves an impression of paint on your gel plate you leave that to dry for a couple of minutes and then you roll another color on top that new paint will activate that old paint of the magazine image and hopefully lift it off well that's what was supposed to be happening <sighs> didn't happen so well and the other thing is um, your magazine prints you only use once because obviously you cover them with paint when you peel off your magazine print you're peeling off probably about 75 to 80 percent of the paint off your plate and it only leaves sort of an impression <coughs> it's really cool to do I want to try it with some other mediums and see what what works as well I just got to find that thing called time if anything anyone can locate the time in my life to do things I want as opposed to few things I have to do for work that would be much appreciated well this video is sort of something for my YouTube channel but I just want to play. I've got no video scheduled, so I thought I'd better sit and voice over today instead of playing. Hmm, maybe when I get my work up to date, I can play again. So I'm getting really good images onto the plate. I was just struggling to get them off the plate. But as I said, it's a bit of hit and miss. You can get some really cool prints, one-off prints, <coughs> which work really, really well. It does depend on, I found that a more opaque um, paint or a little bit thicker paint works a bit better than a runny sort of a runny translucent paint um, so it just depends um, Kaiser Craft worked really well the Joe Sonia's were working nicely um, in the other times I did it not particularly this time because apparently when the camera's on nothing works this one sort of worked but it sort of ideally it should pick up all the paint that's on the plate and it should be clear when you peel the paper off but I was having fun. I really didn't care if they printed. I have a huge bunch of just pattern papers, decorative papers with half faces on it. If you look really, really closely, you can see them um, to play with in my art journal. I may go and try to paint the face in again. I may just use it in background. Just depends. I've just got funky pages to use. With the magazine images, you're also looking for what we call high contrast. So you're wanting a lot of sort of blacks and a lot of whites, not sort of something that's the full tone of the same colour. Like you don't want, say, a picture of an ocean that's got all blue on it. You sort of want dark darks and light lights. Those sort of work a bit better. Now, don't necessarily have to be black and white images. They just have to have what we call high contrast. So sort of have um, a black black and white in the image or darks and lights if that makes sense it's a bit hard to explain maybe i'll do another video and actually do a real-time talking one and then it might work hmm do you think no i'll probably just make a fool of myself again that's okay the so gel plates come in all different sizes this one's a 12 inch one but you can get them in a4 size you can get them in smaller size i use my five by seven a lot if i'm just wanting to make smaller pieces as well so it just depends on what you want to use the final piece for the final piece of paper traditionally I like to gel plate on A4 copy paper the one you put through your printer because it's nice and thin and also the roll of deli paper like grease proof paper I'm using because 99% of my prints are torn up and collage into my art journal and if I use cardstock all the time they would just get seriously too thick it would get too thick to actually collage into my art journal page and it wouldn't look very good the the thinner paper that comes off the roll when you glue it down it almost disappears and you almost just see the painted area that you've got so it goes very translucent 
Similar to deli paper you have in the state, so I wish we could get a ready supply of that over here, but alas, we can't at an affordable rate. So we sort of make do. You can also use sort of tissue paper, and I stamp a lot of stamped images on tissue paper, but tissue paper is just a little bit thin to be putting paint on and pulling paint off. Just doesn't work as well. Second yawn. I'm not tired, it's like three o'clock in the afternoon. I shouldn't be tired. I've been working all day. I'm waiting for something to finish on my machine. And then I've got some computer work to do. So I thought I'll take this half an hour and do something productive. I could have laid on the couch and watched YouTube videos, couldn't I? No, I thought I'd be productive. So the advantage of doing this also is you actually get a lot of paint on the magazine pages. So I actually keep those and keep printing on top of them. And then I will use those in my art journal as background as well. So I don't like to waste anything. Even that picture, piece of paper that I just pulled off that had just the edges of the borders around where my A4 paper wasn't big enough, I usually at the end put some more paint on that and it sort of gives you a funky print and bits of borders to work with as well. So nothing really gets wasted which is really good. Anything that gets painted, thank, thank you for watching, I'll see you next time, bye for now.